I'm oh. sure this sound will be a blast from the past. The delight of spending an hour sending an email. Yes. Yeah. But for a group of residents <laughs> in rural Lancashire, it's a noisy reality that they seem to be stuck with. So they decided to do something about it. Uh, well, Anita went to find out what. A strange hole has been appearing across the Lancashire countryside. Well, the earth's been dug up, but it doesn't look like your average workman's site. There's no orange cones, no warning signs. Is it moles or badgers? No, this rather small hole near Lancaster in northwest England is for broadband cables. Rural communities are often left behind when it comes to the internet, and this hole is the first step in getting this one up to speed. But remarkably, it's not being installed by any of the major internet companies. The villagers, fed up with waiting, have decided to get themselves connected. By installing the cable themselves, the residents aren't reliant on the major infrastructure suppliers like BT or Fujitsu. Andrew Metcalf is a farmer here and has invested in shares to help fund the venture, as well as promising time to help dig the trench. All our information now comes through uh, the computer, uh, stuff from the vets, for, especially for the government. Remember dial-up? Oh, it can take an hour, you know, the documents are so big, you go away and have a cup of tea and you come back and it's still not done and it just seems to take so long. It's painful. So for us, from a purely business point of view, we need to do this. So what's your contribution been to this, Andrew? Well, we've invested uh, £1,500, uh, money-wise, and then uh, because they're obviously coming across our land, Ooh. We've uh, we put, <laughs> we put the time in and we actually dig it ourselves, so we, we do the work. BT has promised to roll out high-speed broadband to two-thirds of the UK by 2014 and is one of the companies working with councils and public bodies to try to reach as much of the rest as possible. But there are still a few areas that won't be covered. Brendan Dick from BT says they won't be laying fibre-optic cables here as it's just too expensive. Well, if you look at the geography, you can just see it's uh, a big challenge given the very dispersed population. So we've got farm there, farm there, there's a farm down there beyond yeah. it. So basically, there are too many farms? Well, it's not the fact of the farms, there's not enough people. The farms are a factor, because clearly one's got to dig over large tracts of land to get to the premises. How much does it cost to do that? We're talking about, you know, many, many tens of thousands of pounds, per, probably. To per, prem per, per premises, it could well be into that level tens of money. Of could Could be. You're such a huge company. How come the company generally can't eat up the cost of, of this? I'd love to be able to stand here and say we'll do the whole of the UK, but economics just kick in. You're, uh, not, you're not a charity? We're not a charity, no. I have to admire what they're trying to do. The key challenge isn't just building it. The key challenge is how do you find money year on year to sustain it and evolve it? The local project hopes to connect around 1,500 properties to this mega net. The first farms and homes will go live in July and the first phase should be finished by the end of the year. By selling two million shares at a pound each to local farmers, the project hopes to raise the money needed to help lay the state-of-the-art fibre optic lines, which then connect directly to the World Wide Web. Chris, if BT, a multi-million pound company, can't afford to do this, how on earth are you doing it? We can do it with the power of the farmers, basically. The farmers are helping us, giving us way leaves through the land and helping us to dig it in because they're really desperate for a connection and they know this is the only way they'll get it. So how much is it costing you? The whole of phase one is costing 1.86 million. How are you raising that much money? Uh, we're doing it through raising shares from the community themselves. We've raised over 300,000, enough to do the core of the network. If the initial dig is a success, they hope to roll it out to anything up to 15,000 properties. There's another boon to the community pulling together. Whilst it looks low-tech, it's mega high speed. Just how quick are we talking? The fastest in the world. There won't be anywhere that's got anything quicker than this. Uh, we're initially starting it at a gigabit, which is... Phew, 500 times the government target. It's fast enough to do high definition television, it's 3D television. Uh, it, it really, anything that you could envisage wanting to do either in a business or in a residential setting for the next few decades, that can deliver it. Despite being out in the sticks, the folk here will soon be cruising the internet superhighway. Just goes to show you, when a community comes together, you get power to the people. 
Yes. It's amazing when you get farmers and tractors on yeah. your sides, I yeah. tell you what. Yeah. Hilary, that must bring a smile to your face. It's fabulous. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous. Yeah. How much did they put in together, do you know? I'm not these little bonds, I'm not sure yeah. how much they were. But it was they did it yeah. through shares, didn't they? Yeah. 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 They don't mess around the fastest ever. Result. Well over a million though to raise. I mean, I'm going to take the concept to Marrakesh, actually. Uh, right, what, just going for it and putting it in yourself, right? I, yeah. I think so. Good, that's interesting, because you've got lots of little hubs all over the world. Yes, I mean, you're famous for not really having a holiday, but you kind of work when I you're there. I never have a holiday. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So important to keep yeah. in contact, though. Yeah. Yeah.